industry and many individuals have made significant contributions to the field. A few of those important discoveries will be discussed in this video. To begin, we will discuss the discovery of the microscope. Exact origins of the microscope are debated. However, there are three key individuals. Zacharias Janssen is the first to use inverted lenses to make observations of his surroundings. More notably is Robert Hooke, an English scientist who made key observations of various organisms, including fungi. One of Hooke's most significant contributions is he coined the term cell. Another notable scientist is Anton von Leeuwenhoek. Leeuwenhoek also made key observations. However, he observed living microscopic organisms, which he referred to as animalcules. Leeuwenhoek is regarded as one of the first to provide accurate descriptions of protozoa, fungi, and bacteria. Another key point in the history of microbiology is the debate over the spontaneous generation theory. The theory of spontaneous generation states that organisms, in this case microorganisms, arise from non-living matter. However, as science progressed, this theory became more and more disputed. One of the first to dispute the spontaneous generation was Francisco Reddy. In 1600s, Francisco Reddy devised an experiment in order to disprove that decaying meat gave way to maggots. In order to disprove this theory, he placed decaying meat in the bottom of several jars. Some jars were left open, as you can see here to the left, and other jars were sealed with the lid to prevent the entry of the flies, as you can see here on the right. The next day, Reddy found the jars which were, had access to flies had maggots developed on the decaying meat, whereas those in which the jars were sealed, no maggots developed. Supporters of the spontaneous generation theory disputed Reddy's experiment, claiming by sealing the jars with lids, he prevented those vital forces needed for life. Therefore, Reddy revised his experiment, this time adding a third set of jars in which he sealed them with netting, similar to gauze. The next day, he came back and found that he had achieved very similar results. The jars, which had open lids and exposed to the flies, had maggots on the decaying meat. Those with the sealed lids and those with the netting or gauze did not have maggots on the meat. Thus, he thought, disproving spontaneous generation. But even by the 1700s, the spontaneous generation debate was still in progress. Although, by this time, scientists agreed larger animals, such as the flies, could not arise from spontaneous generation. However, the debate was on the origin of the animalcules, as described by Leeuwenhoek. Obviously, those very small organisms had to arise from spontaneous generation. An Englishman named John Needham tried to advance the theory of spontaneous generation. To do so, he boiled beef gravy and plant infusions in flask, boiling them to remove all life forms. After he boiled them, he left some jars open and he sealed others with cork. After several days, he found that both flasks contained cloudiness and microscopic animals. Lazaro Spallanzia disputed the theory of spontaneous generation and Needham's experiment. He said the broth was not properly boiled or sealed, and that was the reason that Needham got growth in his broth. Therefore, Spallanzi redesigned the experiment. He too boiled broth in flask, but instead of using corks to seal his flask, 
he heated the neck of the flask hot enough in order to seal the glass together. He found days later that the sealed flask did not contain growth, nor did it contain the microscopic anim animals. Not until the flask or the seal was broken did the broth get contaminated. Spallanzia concluded that the microorganisms actually existed in the air and when they were not sealed properly would contaminate the experiments and the growth was a result of being contaminated. Although this made significant way for the spontaneous generation theory to be disproved, the debate lingered until the 1800s and the work of Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur worked on numerous experiments during this time, especially working with wine and the dairy industry to learn why their products so spoiled so readily. He soon found that bacteria were to blame. Due to his work with the wine and the dairy industry, Pasteur began to conclude if bacteria could spoil milk and wine, perhaps they were the cause of human illness as well. In order for Pasteur to prove his theory, he first had to disprove spontaneous generation. To do this, he devised a new type of flask, as seen here, known as a swan neck flask. And as you can see, the flask has a S or curved shape in it. The curve in the neck prevents the microorganisms from the air from falling into the broth as they are heavier and will collect in that curvature. With his newly designed flask, Pasteur filled the flask with broth, heated the broth to remove any pre-existing microorganisms that may be present, and then he left the flask open to the air. After much time, he found that the flask did not become contaminated, thus proving that the microorganisms were actually in the air and disproving once and for all spontaneous generation. Pasteur in all of his experiments, concluded that microorganisms may be the cause of infectious disease. And therefore, that got him to postulate what is known as the germ theory of disease. As long as he tried, Pasteur was still unable to prove his own theory. However, German scientist Robert Koch did prove the germ theory of disease. He was able to do so by isolating the causative agent for anthrax, which he named Bacillus anthraxis. He was able to isolate the bacterium through an established sequence of experimental steps. These steps are known as Koch's postulates and are still used today to associate various microorganisms with diseases. As the understanding of microbes and their relationship to diseases grew, it was important to learn more about disease transmission itself. Epidemiology is the study of the source, cause, mode of transmission of diseases. American scientist Oliver Wendell Holmes was the first to write about the spread of disease via healthcare workers. In particular, he wrote about healthcare workers spreading childbirth fever amongst its patients. His work is what began the field of epidemiology. Through the work of Holmes and Pasteur, new scientists such as Ignan Simowitz was inspired and implemented hand washing practices in the birthing ward in which he ran in order to prevent attending healthcare workers from spreading diseases amongst their patients. Joseph Lister, an English surgeon, 
also applied the germ theory of practice and started using phenol to clean wounds and dressings of his patients. Lister was the first to show microorganisms were responsible for surgical wound infections. The work of these three scientists and Pasteur ultimately led to aseptic techniques that we still use today and were the reason that we were able to halt epidemics as they were able to interrupt the spread of microorganisms by implementing many of their techniques. Despite the advances being made in microbiology and the relationship between microbes and disease, it wasn't until the early 1900s that there was actually methods developed to help patients who were infected with these microbial diseases. Two significant events in medical microbiology need to be noted. First was in 1910 and the discovery of Salverzan, which is an arsenic derivative. And Paul Yerlich discovered Salverzan and used it to help treat patients who had syphilis. The second is in 1928 when Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin when working with the fungus Penicillin natatum. This led to the development of antibiotics. Up until the mid-1900s, most of the discoveries in microbiology were working on the bacterium, as work with the viruses could not be effectively performed due to the lack of proper instrumentation. However, in the 1940s, the electron microscope was developed. Soon after, cultivation methods for viruses were also introduced. With these two discoveries, the knowledge of viruses developed rapidly and is continuing to grow. The field of microbiology continues to grow and is now one of the fastest growing divisions in the biological sciences.